take a closer look at what we're going to be um, using. Story first of how this is coming about. Recently I've done four um, pastel workshops and at the end of them I was sent a free set, a limited palette of some pan pastels to try out. Very interesting. I've seen them before but never actually used them. Obviously I've always used the solid or stick pastels. And um, obviously they were only a limited palette so in this film next I'm going to show you the results of that as I just used these six colours to make a simple landscape and I use those with Indian ink. What I'm going to do today is this beautiful scene um, in France, in the cruise, on the River Sidel, lovely little trout river. As I'm going over there, in fact tomorrow night, I've got a four hour drive from here down to the tunnel and then across the tunnel and then a seven hour drive tied to the cruise in France. So I'm not looking forward to the long drive but I'm only going to get two weeks there because I've got hospital appointments here and so on. So I'm still suffering from a bad back and a possible hernia. So CTC scans tonight, I get it out of the way, take two weeks break away, hopefully get my health sorted out and then I can hopefully spend as much of the summer as I can going back there but I should go back by aircraft this time. Which will give me much more time to paint. So this is the first in the new films of this summer's adventures in uh, France. And to celebrate that, we're going to start with this picture of the Sidel and trying out these pan pastels. What I'm going to do then is show you the materials and the mediums and how the and tools I'm going to use with them. The ones that very kindly sent me because I asked them if they could send on some more colours to match up with and to work on and advance with the limited palette so I can do a full demonstration and a full exploration. Now I'm going to use this later in a few days over in France, if the weather permits of course, and do some on plein air work on pastel paper. In this case though I'm going to use a £140 hot pressed watercolour paper, those smoothest of the papers. And I'm going to start with water and see how these handle with that. I don't want to clog them up, but I'm hoping that I can paint an underpainting. I want a coloured background working up, I want my darks there already. So rather than have to plonk them in onto pastel paper, I'm going to use water and pastel, and water should fix the pastel. So it does normally. Let's hope these work the same way. Pastels are normally like watercolour, they're the pigment with gum arabic in them to bind them. So if we add water to them, they should dry out on the paper and be fixed. So that my next coats can go on um, without the, the, the coats moving underneath and they'll go on nice and firmly. I want nice bright colours at the end. This was the worry I had about this technique was how will they go on using the applicators because pastel needs to be put on freshly and not be smudged and not be rubbed in or blended too much at the end or it goes dead. Same with fixative, I don't use fixative. The preliminary coats can go on and be blocked and blended or rubbed but the final coats want to be fresh and reflect the light. The particles and the pigments need to reflect the light and not be blended or smudged. So I must be able to put these on freshly, even with these applicators. We'll see if that happens. So let's have a close look now at the applicators and we know what we're going to do, we know why we're going to do it, and we know where we're going to do it. Uh, in this case in the studio, but in France shortly. I think, let's look at the advantages already. They're in nice neat palettes, easy to get at, we haven't got pastels rolling about all over the place. For many of you that don't like having pastels on your hands, this looks a good idea because you don't actually ever touch the pastels unless you want to. You can use the applicators at all times. So if you don't like pastel in your fingers, and many of you don't, I know, then this is the way for you because you don't have to touch the pastels at all. You just touch the, the tools. And the tools come in a variety of shapes and sizes with nice little handles and new heads to fit on so you can replace them fairly easily. Packs of the heads as well. I'll bring the camera closer so you can take a look at these, shall we, and then we'll make a start. Now I do have my old new watercolour brushes and so on here, because I'm going to need to use those with the water to experiment with, and also hopefully to do some texturing as well, because in this particular painting I've got a lot of ferns and so on that I'm going to want to do. We've got all sorts of textures. If you look at the photograph here, you can see I want to get these fern textures, I want to get the moss textures, I want to get the, the sparkling of the water and the dots and dashes here. So not only their applicators, I'm going to need to use some brushes as well to try and see what sort of effects we can get with this. The pastels themselves are just very um, soft blocks. So they come like that. As you can see on my finger, the powder comes off fairly easily and it's quite firm and it goes on. So we have to just drag these applicators through this to then place it onto the paper. So it's, it's, it's uh, blocks of the powder basically. It's almost like a pastel, um, but a larger block of it. Um, but softer than an ordinary pastel would normally be, although the unisons are pretty good as well. So I'm sure I'm going to have great fun working between these and the unisons as well, which are my favourites. Um, and we'll just see what, uh, what, 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 what effects we can get. So then we've got these applicators, and onto those we can actually fit the tips. So like this, we can just take those tips 
and place them onto the uh, applicator and they just slide on, push on like this, they're pretty easy to do and there are some where you just put them on and then tear off the end so they just go on the very tips themselves and there we are, that applicator is now ready to use and like a painting knife, not a palette knife, you see they come down so that your finger misses the paper but there's all our different shaped applicators, we've got square ones and so on we just push the ends on so I've got nice big square ones there I can do flat shapes, round shapes and get them right on, you can leave them standing off a little bit to make them even bendier at the end it depends how far on you want to push them and then they come in different sizes as well and here we've got um, the applicators where you can actually use them just with your hands so we've got triangular ones, we've got round ones we've got um, block ones and I've got a couple of those out already you see here so we're very versatile, even little blending ones here look with new tips so I'm pretty impressed with the quality of these and the variety. These have been out for some years now and they've been exploring and you've got many videos um, on channels such as YouTube where you can see how it all works. So there we are, there's my packs of applicators ready to go. I'm have a great fun with those experimenting and I will show you each and every stage. And like you, I'm going to be exploring with all these new materials and methods. Um, so we'll just follow along together, shall we? And just see where it goes. So this is as exciting for me as it hopefully will be for you watching me doing it. I'm going to get a jar of water now and we'll start with trying to put some washes of this colour on as a base coat first then. Well today we're going to be trying some of these pan parcels are very kindly donated to me to try out and I'll explain my thoughts on those as we go along. And I've got those to use with the unison so fortunately I've got my other darks as well. You notice that they come with these special little tools for applying and blending as well. So I think it may be very useful for clients and students of mine that hate feeling pastel, that don't like pastel on their fingers because they can use the tools totally and never actually get to grips physically with the pastels. So we're going to use some black Indian ink and... I've got that in bottles for the students here, so you guys will want a little pot to put a bit of black ink in, okay? Right. And water Do I need that if I'm doing it on this? So I yes, work yes, you know, it still works. Yeah. And you'll want a water pot as well, and something just to, to, to mix in. Um, then I've got uh, two brushes, and each of them's going to be given a piece of stick. There we are, that I've sharpened at the ends, because a stick can draw with ink as nicely as a brush can. We're going to see that today as well. Right, I'm going to do a more in-depth discussion in a moment, but what I'd just like you to do is, if you just leave what you're doing for a moment and just come round me here, I just want to show you the tools we're using. Um, I've already shown you um, that one over there, which is the example of how we can use stick and ink and brush and ink with water, um, because it does thin down, it just mix with water until it's dry. So we can use that with watercolour as well, because you can watercolour over the top of it, of course, because mm -hmm. it's dry, it won't, it won't mix. So rather than use profi pens or fine line pens, you've got much more versatility with a brush and with a stick. And it's surprising, I've got a Ponzi stick, you haven't. <laughs> I've shaped mine up. Um, but you can have a, a, a blunt end and a sharper end. And it's surprising the length of line that we can actually do with just a piece of stick. You know, look at that. On and on and on. It's like a pen, isn't it? Yeah. And you just wouldn't believe that. So any stick that hasn't got a pith in it, otherwise we're taking a pith. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Um, dear me, he's bad this morning. Uh, because obviously a pith is a hole in the middle. Um, so the blunt end, I don't want to use that in a minute because I'm going to cover my hands. But I'll be using the brushes mainly because I prefer brushes, but for fine work and for loose work. And obviously you can, you can dot and dash with that, you can do the textures with it, you can roll it, you can smudge with it. When I tend to use my finger even with ink and then wash it off afterwards. So I've done some lovely moving, for instance, if I had a model here for you, and we had a model moving constantly, so 10 minute poses. This is a great way to do that because you can shadow in with this, you can use a little bit of water even, and you can blend with your finger, you can use the brushes, you can use the stick. Very versatile, lovely for landscapes. If you can get hold of some old newsprint, you know what newspaper is printed on, okay. it goes a yellowy colour, it fades over the years, and it looks lovely with stick and ink or, or pen and ink um, because it goes into the little parchment type colour, it takes the ink very well as well, and of course it's nice and cheap too. So, you know, not watercolour paper normally, I've just used that today to show you. Um, now, of course, once you've got those darks on there, Nothing to stop us from coming back in with, with colours. And let's just see how that works. So a little bit of colour here. Um, use one of my brushes. And look, you can use it like watercolour as before, or we can go in more heavily. And we can use our fingers. And you can just see the black showing through, or we can work around the black. And we will be able, of course, as well, 
to work over the pastel too, or even in wet into wet, as you can see there. So we've got this today's fun day, and I'm going to also use the pan pastels today. <coughs> That's these over here. I've been set, uh, sent a set of pan pastels um, to experiment, to explore with as landscape. Right. So I'm going to start on this green paper with the pan pastels, um, let the green show through a bit, using Indian ink first of all. Um, to make the darks and then work the, the lighter colours around it. Starting with the, the black Indian ink, I'm not going to bother drawing it out at all. I hope we're not going to get it all over this lovely white chair. Um, let's see, approximately there's a tree here. Quite some ink in my brush. Just mark up where some of the things are. Now, I, I, noticed, I remember one artist who came to do some demonstrations for the Arts and Art Gallery once, and um, he was using a cottonwood earbud, earbuds, you put the earbuds on sticks. He does his pastels on coloured paper like this, and he starts with the Indian ink um, and does, uses the earbud to do all the drawing, first of all, in the darks, and then works his pastels up. And it's very effective indeed. So that's another little tool you might think of using. You can use an earbud for blending pastel as well, for doing finer work, for blending edges, but it's also great for actually drawing with the Indian ink. So let's just um, get in these nice strong. You won't need an awful lot of ink, it's very strong. done with this little demo I think it was just to show you what could be done with these. I could go back in the darks if I wanted but I probably just about succeeded in showing you what you needed to see how these can be used. Right I'm going to go on now down to the woodland one. Now just to finish off on this one uh, because it's so dull I just want to do a bit of fun in the foreground and add a few little copies and things here. I think I'll have a bit of fun. And just put some little colours against the... Yeah. And a few little yellow flowers in there as well. Just to brighten up the foreground and give them an effect. Yeah. Some shine in there. All it needs, a few dots extra. And there we are. building up these rocks, pick one shape right to another so that we can put the right colours in the right places and the right shapes one to another. It should be as simple as that when I come to the actual painting. So although it's quite a complicated drawing, if we did suspect get one shape right to another, we should be able to pull this together. And I'm not doing a very loose piece this time. I should start always fairly loosely and tighten up. I want to be fairly figurative in this one. I really want to play around with these different textures and explore what these pan pastels can do compared to um, using water or using the techniques that I've been used to with other mediums and pastels. So we'll see how versatile they are. Okay, so from my brushes I'm going to take a nice oval mop, which is what I usually use for doing these sorts of washes. Wet it and we'll just see what happens when we put the pastel on. Now, I have several ways of doing this. Uh, normally I would wet, uh, I would put the pastel onto the paper and then wet it and paint it on. But as we've got actual blocks of colour here, I wonder if they will actually paint. I don't want to get them all soggy and messy, but let's just see how we can do this. Take a little bit of this lovely deep blue here and see if it comes off on my brush and whether it will paint onto there. Yes it will. Now that is quite interesting then. So I'm going to wet that area, take some of that paint off. I don't want to make these solid, so I hope I'm not destroying the, um, 
the pastel in this way. We won't really know until later, but I'll just take it off that area there. And it means that I can paint it light watercolour. So straight away, you can see that the pan pastels can be used just as a watercolour. I haven't watched many films uh, on YouTube yet of um, people working with the pan pastels. So I'm starting absolutely afresh um, with my own methods and ways. So I'm going to put water right across this now. I'm going to try a different way. Let's just take an applicator and um, I'll take this round one here and we'll deliberately take some of this green and put it onto the paper. Now this is ordinary watercolour paper remember, this isn't a special pastel paper and look how that goes on there quite well. Take some off the deep blue now put that on to the paper then we'll see if we can blend it that way. Right, that soaks into the paper, that goes into the paper much more harshly so it's not allowing me to paint it on very delicately, it's going, on, it's, it's going straight into the paper that way. So I think I'm going to be better off just using the brush and the water um, at first. It's quite, there's a lot of mid-tones in this and uh, the highlights I'm going to hopefully bring out with the pure pastel later. I'm going to put the lights back over the top with the actual pastel so I don't have to worry too much about watercolour techniques on this in that I don't have to leave the lights behind. The same with the tree, I can bring other colours into it and painting it like watercolour. I'm not using black, I'm just using the deep colours. I have got some black or some very dark in the palette but I don't want to use it yet. Hopefully I'm getting my base coat sorted out here before I can... We can continue moulding this around with the, with the brush. And these colours are going to dry lighter. Now as I'm painting I'm noticing that the paint is thickening up. So I'm able to uh, get slightly heavier, which is what I wanted to do with these. Totally freestyle, I don't know how it's going to turn out, just using the techniques I've used before. So hopefully when that dries, that's going to fix it. We shall see. It certainly would with the stick pastel, so let's hope it does with these. Right, I'll let that dry off, and then we'll go back to the traditional ways of using pastel, or the way of using this with these applicators. Let's see how that dries. Well that's good because we can now see that the pastel has become fixed, it's not smudging look, so I can work colours over the top. Let's see what happens when we do that, and I think I want to work from my darkest colours to my lightest. Um, now I've got all of these, this range of tools that I can use here, let's just see how I can handle these. So we've got the round one of these now. Have I messed this up? Let's have a look and see. So it's where I haven't put the water, it's coming off nice and easily. Where I have put the water, it's still very damp, it needs to dry off. So that should be right when it's dry. Let's see what happens when I start using these colours now. Going on quite nicely, yeah. From my mid-tones here back to my darks first of all, in this case. Picture I do will be different, but one of the things I need in my sort of work is to be able to work very rapidly because if you're outdoors doing it on plein air you've got to be able to get things done quickly before the light changes or the weather changes. So we can blend it out this way on top of the existing undercoat that I've done. I don't want to make this at all thick because I know I've got to come back with lighter highlights over this shortly. sponge, just so I can get it fairly clean, see if it does come off, otherwise I've got to use a different one. Probably it's better to keep one for darks and one for lighter, so I'll use a clean one now for the lighter. It makes common sense. Um, right, let's start to look at the way these colours reflect, we'll look at some lighter blues going on here. Gradually working up my, my stronger colours, so just delicately now start to put in these mid-tones again, back in with the mid-tones that are reflecting in here. Take some burnt sienna here now and start to just work that up as grass has come out here, just the tip of the applicator, see if we can do it with that without using the spiky one. Right, I need to be able to lay these light colours over the top now. I don't know how well they're going to go. They don't seem to be going on as brightly as I would have liked the undercolour. 
it may be too heavy for it. I may have to try the um, stick pastels if this won't work, which would be a shame because I was hoping this technique was going to work with this and it doesn't seem to be. Let's try a bit of the light yellow. So anyway, using this technique with a pan pastel, I am finding it a real struggle. It's just um, going to go muddy over itself with this way of applicating, which is exactly what I was worried about and expecting. Um, I had hoped that the pastel would be strong and loose enough to be able to go across here and I'd be able to texture it on even, but at the moment I'm really struggling. What I was going to try and do now, what I will try and do, is just take a rake brush. I just want to see if it's possible do some of that, to do any texturing with these, with the white of this, whether it will actually go on with texture. It might do, no, it's going to be too fine I think. I was hoping sponge or this would actually pick it up and put it on, but it's not going to, so that's a pity because I was hoping that that would work. Okay, I brought in the unisons now uh, to just try and get last highlights on here. I wasn't able to put on clean pastel with those applicators, which is what I expected. It may be possible with pastel paper using less pastel no, different technique, but let's see what we can do now <coughs> with these unisons on top. Yes, you see, we can go in and more heavily twist and get these light colours coming through that I couldn't get with the, the with applying the pans in that way on this paper but it may be I can do it and I will try later with the um, with the pastel paper now with my really cool greens going on in the background here I start to get these turquoises in a little bit against the warm greens so what we need to do now really is bring up some of these really lovely light colours wherever they are to try and just pick out the cordons against the cools. Just darken down some of these rocks a little against here to make the light seem lighter and we're just sparkling with the gets those lights a little bit there. Well I'm going to call it a day at that. Um, we just worked up these unisons over the top of that to get the effects we wanted and uh, I think it's about as near as I'm going to get it. A little pastel like this with the effect of light. Well there we are, that's the finished piece. Not too bad at the end of it all. Let's have a close look at the uh, technique, shall we? And that's the pan pastels with water overlaid with unison. We could do the same with the water in unison, but it certainly has uh, possibilities. But I want to see what the pan pastel will do now, really just on um, proper pastel paper and so on. So not an unqualified success but uh, certainly an interesting way to work and it shows what can be done with them linked with another pastel. I think as I say we'll have to see how they do when they're on their own on just pastel paper and possibly even just without the wash how they'd manage to be stained in as a depth as, as an undercoat on the watercolour paper at some stage as well without the water. Okay then, on we go to France and the next stage of the adventure.